Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Mountain Murders Offbeat. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. Do you have on your cape? I do have my cape on. Freedom Fighters United! Yeah, we're going to take down all the people who's uh, who's against freedom. Woo! Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I love the one-star reviews, Dylan. We do. We get so much joy out of them. Um, we're kind of, we love our five stars. Honestly, the positive feedback and the kind words. But which, I'm a masochist. There's much more of those than there are one stars. So I feed on the one stars. But the one stars always come with a certain tone. Those people are hurt. Horrible podcast. <laughs> okay, first of all, the hosts are annoying. I tried to like this podcast. But we're okay sometimes, Dylan. Apparently, if we have any kind of opinion on social justice issues... Anyone who listens to our podcast, they know how we feel about equality, right? Well, I think you could uh, you could read between the lines and know how we feel about our uh, fellow human beings. Exactly. Apparently, that makes us freedom fighters, and we're just totally irrational. Uh, so here's the bottom line. If you come at us on social media. Or on us. Or on us. Because, Honestly. Because that's rude. Unless, I think so. Unless you ask. Consent. I mean, Dylan... He does kind of like that sometimes, but... You need consent. I consent to it. Yeah, you got to ask him for permission, right? Okay. Um, so, yeah, if you if you come at us on social media with your um, venomous rage because you disagree with something and you're making comments that make me think that you're probably a racist asshole, yeah. I'm going to delete them and then I'm probably going to block you. Yeah, and then we're going to make fun of you later on the podcast. Exactly. So, if, if that hurts your little feelings... Yeah, go hurt your weedle feel feels. If that's the hill you want to die on when Jesus comes back, that's fine. But I'm going to make fun of you. You wanted our attention. You, you left us the one star. I'm giving you the attention you deserve. Yeah, go, fuck you. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> right? Won't you Won't you go fuck yourself on top of that hill, you son of a bitch? And we have on our stretchy spandex superhero costumes. I've got on my cape. Dylan's wearing his cape. Uh, we're ready to fight some freedom. Right, Dylan? Freedom yes. Fighters. Because you know what? Freedom isn't free. It costs folks like you and me. Okay, because uh, if not now, when? And if not me, who? Freedom costs a oh. buck oh five. Gosh. Gosh. We're mountain murders. America. We're here. Get used to it. Freedom fighters, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. America. Yeah. God, I love that. Okay, so there has been so much chaos in the news lately. Like, I don't know what is going on in the world. If it's people suffering from, like, pandemic psychosis or something. But it just seems like every day there are more and more crime stories. And they just keep getting, like... Over the top outrageous. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, what are you going to talk? Can we mention the parades? Well, that's what I was going to talk oh about. Oh, my God. Freaking parade. So, you tell us a little bit about this guy who um, allegedly drove the SUV through this uh, parade. Is it in Wisconsin? In, in Wisconsin. It's in Wisconsin. It's in Wisconsin. Yeah. So, it's in Wisconsin, Dylan. It's Wisconsin. And I. You know, I'm totally country, so I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, but I think it's Waukesha. Yeah. Okay. At first, I wanted to be like Waukesha, Wisconsin. And then I was but like, that's what? Waukesha. Where she live at? <laughs> Waukesha. Okay. Um, I like that name. I, I do too, honestly. <laughs> honestly, I think I'm going to have a child and name them that now. Oh my God. I want to. Will you have a baby for me? Yeah. Waukesha Packer. I will give you permission to have a child with some other person if you will like just let me snuggle it whoa okay so if uh anybody have any takers on surrogate wombs out there hit us up at mountain murders podcast at gmail.com and, and here at mountain murders we feel like nature should take its course so we're going to keep the laboratory out of this one if you want a night with dylan <laughs> if you want a night inside dylan Dale. Email us. That ain't gonna make nobody pregnant. But I do want um some custodial rights, if that's okay. Like some stepmom rights or something. Oh, I you do. can have the baby. I, mean, I want to snuggle this well, baby. Well, I can't speak for this said uh, surrogate um, uterus, but... uh. Okay, so if you're just dying to sex up Dylan... Okay. And you'll give me the consequences of that union? <laughs> There's gonna be consequences. I will take those consequences, and I will squeeze it and love it. Oh. <laughs> baby. Here little Waukesha me. Packer. Okay, so Waukesha. Okay. This is why we're annoying, Dylan. We're fighting freedom, and we can't stay on task. Now we're having fake babies. I'm having fake babies. Waukesha. 
Um, this was supposed to be a very celebratory night. It was the Christmas parade. And, you know, people look forward all year long to the annual Christmas parade. Yeah, I mean, I could honestly put myself in those people's shoes. Basically, a small town Christmas parade. I love the Christmas parade. The kids, I like There's to go. There's a certain excitement in the air. Yeah, it's cold. You're all bundled up. Maybe you got some hot cocoa. Yeah, and they got the lights up on Main Street. You're watching the marching bands yeah, go by, and little kids love it so much. Maybe some like local homecoming <laughs> or beauty queens waving from like a flashy car. You've got the local politicians, Santa. All the local businesses with their floats, all the organizations. I love it. And then they're throwing candy. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah, and it's always a fun time, a quiet, kind of calm time. You know, all the streets blocked off. And um, honestly, I've never felt unsafe at a Christmas parade. No, never. Well, it was supposed to be, like I said, a celebratory night, Dylan, in Waukesha. High school bands, we have politicians, dance groups, um, all marching along Main Street in this Milwaukee suburb. And this happened around 4.40 p.m. All of a sudden, like out of nowhere, come barreling down the road, a red SUV. It stormed past barricades and like drove through the crowd and hit dozens of people. At least five were killed and more than 40 people have been injured. The numbers could change. The city authorities gave a statement um, like Sunday evening, and I haven't really updated my my news cycle since then, but it seems like it's about 40 people who've been injured from this. Oh, yeah. Every one of those videos, we went through the videos, uh, are disturbing, even before the SUV actually made contact with the first victim. Um, speeding past that small child there on the edge of the street, and people just confused, not knowing what's going on. And then he obviously intentionally drove into that thick crowd of people. It was a red Ford Escape driven by a male. They reportedly have this person in custody at the moment. And from what I understand, this driver was released the day before on like some domestic assault charges and was like out on bond, like just got out of jail. So he was in jail for some reason. We think we think it was a domestic situation, maybe a hold. You know, they hold you 48 hours to calm you down, if you will. And then it's like he went straight out and perpetuated this crime. Let's yeah, attack on this uh, downtown parade. This guy, his name was Daryl Brooks. He's 39. He was freed from jail on bond after prosecutors requested what they now say was an inappropriately low bail. So by Sunday evening, as this parade is happening, this guy just gets in his car and speeds toward these smiling families in a troupe called the Dancing Grannies. Oh. Which are like a beloved local dance group. It's all, you know, women of a certain age. I say they might have been cloggers, you reckon? Like maybe tap dancers, tap jazz dancers. dancers. I don't okay. know. They're just older women who enjoy dancing. I want to see the dancing like a, grannies. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that sound fun? I want to watch the dancing grannies. <laughs> um, it strikes down all of these folks, and this man seemingly has a very lengthy criminal history. Well, does he have a, uh, do we know if he has a mental his, mental health history? I don't believe that's been released. Because, I mean, this is. the public uh, yet? This seems beyond um, your typical criminal behavior. He has been in and out of the criminal justice system system in Wisconsin throughout his adult life. He had arrests in the Milwaukee area for uh, resisting or obstructing an officer, bail jumping, recklessly endangering safety, disorderly conduct and battery, among like many other charges. He posted rap tracks to SoundCloud. And described himself growing up in a dangerous Milwaukee neighborhood and having trouble with the legal system. In one video that he posted online, he appeared to rap alongside that Ford Escape Ooh. that he used to perpetuate this violence. Jesus. Yeah. So there was a gas station parking lot incident on November 2nd where he punched a woman in the face at a hotel room, then followed her in his SUV into this parking lot at the gas station where he hit her with this car. Okay. So this guy's totally out of control. He's not afraid of violence and he just sounds like a, um, a full fledged shitbird. Let me go ahead and say it. The criminal complaint that charged him 
with recklessly endangering the woman carries a possible sentence of 10 years in prison. The woman was treated for injuries that included facial cuts and bruises and some swelling on her lip and dried blood on her face. He has a long history of domestic abuse allegations and bench warrants in a paternity case, which are typically issued for non-payment of child support. In February, a judge issued a warrant for his arrest after he reneged on a monthly agreement to pay a woman in the area $151 in child support and $50 in money that he owed her. And this case goes back for over a decade. Jeez. So he, this guy, I mean, he's just, yeah. So he's a piece of shit. A shitbird. And, and now, for whatever reason, he's taken his anger out on the entire town, basically. Right. I mean, we really don't know what the motive is. But we could infer that perhaps it is just angry lashing out. Honestly, I don't care what his motive is. Um, I think this should carry, um, I mean, this should carry way past, you know, vehicular homicide or manslaughter. This was intentional, very intentional. It could have been even worse than what it's turned out, and it's horrible. Well, there was some talk still in that um, folks were speculating whether or not this was like a domestic terrorist type of incident. Well, I mean, how... Uh, but he totally should be charged with domestic terrorism. Why, because, why not? Because that's a, that's no different than someone walking in that crowd and setting off a bomb. This is like terror to the people or yes. whatever. This should be a charge. This was widespread panic and, and an attack on everyone in sight indiscriminately. And uh, why shouldn't it be a terroristic charge? Because they charge... Uh, other people, drug dealers and such, with terrorism, because you know, because of their drugs and the harm it causes the community. So this was a direct attack on this community. So he definitely should be charged as a domestic terrorist. Let's hope that we get a speedy trial and this piece of shit gets a fair and just sentence, meaning very lengthy, maybe never sees a light of day again. Well, you know what? Now he's going to be in jail in that area where people are in jail who that's their families that were at that parade. So let's hope that uh, every single day he's in custody on top of what his sentence ends up being is a is a bad day for him. You've been watching a lot of those like life and lockup shows. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. And and those people <laughs> are they're in there for crimes. You know, most of them did something to be there. You know, let's uh, I've been in jail myself, you know, and I did something to be there. Dang. Oh, yeah, get a little street cred. I didn't know you had a criminal record. <laughs> yeah, but... Who um, are you? <laughs> but they're just regular folk, too. I mean, they're not all, you know, maniacal murderers and rapists. And uh, uh, a lot of them are waiting trial if it's in a county jail setting. So they haven't even been convicted of anything. And, uh, yeah, that was their families that were attacked. So I, I don't... I like they'll end up moving this guy, like, oh, out this... of county. Yes, and he's not going to be in Jim gen- Pop. He's not going to be in the general population. I would He's imagine going... the trial likely won't take place in the county either. I mean, I'm just speculating, but... Well, it's going to be hard to find an impartial jury. Exactly, <laughs> especially in a town like this. But in all the counties around, they're going to know too, so fuck him. Fuck him. Oh my gosh, so where do we go from here? Well, Dylan, I have compiled some of our listener stories that oh. have come to us from emails and... Instagram messages and direct messages on the Twitter. The Twitter. Wait a second. Hold on. Wait. Are you telling me we're about to do a listener episode, listener stories episode? Oh like, my God. OMG. Um, like. Totally done. I'm, I'm serving so... it up hot and ready like some Krispy Kreme donuts in your face. And no, they don't sponsor us. But if you'd like to, I'll be glad to uh, pitch your business because I love donuts. Yes, and we can do it in, in a quite a a, a well, a, a more well articulated way. I'll if glaze if Dylan's face with your Krispy Kreme. Yeah, rub those dirty donuts all over me, baby. Yeah, they're all sticky. Mm, God, I just want some of the custard and filling. You like so? What would that be like? Yes. The Bavarian cream filled? Yeah, I want to bite it and I want to squirt out the back. Like a Boston cream Ooh. donut or something. Yeah. You know, I like just a good old fashioned glaze. Oh God, no! And I like an old fashioned. It's like the cake donut. Yeah. Oh, like a crawler? No. No? No. Just a straight up. Just the old-fashioned cake donut. Okay. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about donuts. But we've uh, we've annoyed folks uh, fighting freedom for far too long. Dylan, let's get into some of our listener stories. Okay, go ahead and lay the first one on me. Okay. You look like you're prepared. Oh, I'm ready. Okay, you've got your, your cape flapping in the wind. Let's do this. Hey, Heather and Dylan. 
Well, hello. Hi. First, I want to say I've been a longtime listener of the podcast. It is one of the best around. Still can't believe you're not super famous. You should be. God, we agree with her. Well, thank you. Still can't. Oh, let's see. Okay. It may not be. Sl- I'm sorry. I have a story for you. It may not be something you'd put on the show. If you don't, that's okay. I'll still listen religiously. No, we're going to put this on the show. You need to hear this. It's happening right now. So I had been out of the dating game for roughly a year, and being the awkward mess that I am, my best friend had convinced me to try out OK Cupid. Oh, okay. Online dating. That's a classic. Figured, eh, I can I can get to know some people online and then try a date. Terrible idea. I'm still mad at her. So I meet this guy on the site, and we spend a few weeks chatting and getting to know each other, and he seems really cool. He asked me on a date, and I said, sure. Here's the part where I'm a moron and surprised I didn't get murdered. I say I prefer low-key dates, so he suggests that we cook at his place, he'll make us dinner, and we'll watch an indie horror film. I agree. I'm so stupid. I show up at his place and have developed a code word system through text with my best friend, and she has all the details of where I am. He meets me outside, and I realize I tower over him. At five foot seven, that rarely happens to me, but I shrug it off. Can't help your height, right? Okay, so she's five seven. Yes, and he's not five seven. He is. Un- she, he falls under five foot seven. Yeah, because she 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 used the term towering over him, so she's more than a couple of inches taller than this guy. Seems Sounds to like. be the case. Okay. He lives in a pretty nice new double wide, which is on his dad's land. He shows me around, talking about his new place, emphasizing the master bedroom. He then shows me a large bathroom. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's excited. He just bought a new place, and we're fairly young at the time. I'm 26, and I didn't own a home. Understandable, right? Yeah. Like Vanna White, he presents the big garden jet tub and asks flirtily, do you like bubble baths? I think we'll both fit in. Oh, I like this guy. He's going in. He's going in for the kill. Ha ha ha. Um, no. Then takes me to the kitchen to show me the four bottles of semi-expensive wine he bought for me. I was a server in a high-end place at the time, so these were not off-the-shelf Walmart wines. No Arbor Mist, thanks. And there was no prepared dinner. He pours me a glass of wine, and I awkwardly pet his dog. We sit on the couch, and he puts on this weird Italian art movie. No subtitles, all in Italian. Neither one of us knows what is happening. So I just sit there, feet flat on the ground, spine rod straight, sipping my wine, and then he decides to basically curl up in my lap. And he starts nuzzling my face, like that thing cats do, but with his face (laughs) on my face for at least 10 minutes. No. Well, dude. So, okay, this scene is very awkward. It's it's like if awkward was a person, right? (laughs) So... Uh, there's no dinner. He's got like four bottles of wine, and and he spent a little money. He's, you know, he spent a little money on the wine. They're lined up there, like we're gonna crush all these. He's already showed her the bathtub, and kind of made her feel weird. Talking about bubble baths. That's t- totally. It's a hard joke, even if it is a joke to pull off on a first date, right? I mean, it's either gonna land or it's gonna bomb, right? So he's kind of bombed on that, and they're sitting on the couch watching this Italian horror film, which that's just a whole. Very specific genre in of its own. No subtitles. Oh, it's not even a horror film. It's an art film. Oh, okay. So this Italian, <laughs> strange Italian film. I like to imagine it's like an obscure spaghetti western, like The Crying Onion. Okay. <laughs> okay. And no subtitles. You have no... And now he's nuzzled up in her lap like a small feline. For at least 10 minutes. Oh His God. dog looks at me with pity. At this point, I excuse myself to the bathroom and text my best friend to call me and get me out of there. After taking her call 20 minutes later, I politely try and thank him for the glass of wine and make my way off the couch. And he lays across me and force cuddles me, would not let me leave. So I just stood up and he plummets to the floor (laughs) because like I said. Okay, so that's a little bit creepy. It's almost not funny now because this is weird. Yeah. Plummets to the floor, because like I said, I'm an Amazon woman compared to him. He pops up off the floor like a tiny gymnast to help me put my coat on. He gives me one good sniff right at the nape of my neck. Oh, he Joe Biden's the shit out of her. Pretty sure some of my hair is still infused to his brain from how deep an inhale that was. 
Oh, my God. I made no attempt to hide my leaping off the porch and sprinting to my car. Pretty sure gravel was flying as I sped out of there. Deleted my account that night, never again. And it signed, Raina the girl who got sniff fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I've never heard of getting a sniff fuck, but that's pretty funny. Oh, I'm going to use that. I mean, that. this is definitely a very dangerous situation. No, yeah. And... This guy doesn't seem to have any boundaries, doesn't no. understand consent or what is appropriate. Or a first date. I mean, let's be right? honest. Yeah. And fortunately, it doesn't sound like Raina felt physically threatened. No, it seems like she could have just like maybe tossed him across the room. <laughs> so she just stood up and he slid off her lap. <laughs> it's like an annoying lap dog that won't leave you alone. And then he sniffed her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Raina. Okay, we. Th I knew we had to share this. Yeah. When I read the story, I was like, eh, "We're sharing this. This is funny." That's a good. That's um a great, but but creepy, you know, first date story. This guy. And so it ruined her on online dating. I would I say. I wish we could do like a "Where are they now?" Yeah. <laughs> we could find out what he's doing now. Oh my God! Maybe you found someone else who likes to get <laughs> sniffed. <laughs> Joe Biden. They could just sniff each other. Oh my God. Okay. Are we ready for our next story? Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you, Ray. This comes from Michael. I've been listening to Mountain Murders for about a year. So glad I found the podcast. The wife and I listen to it all the time. Not as scary as some of the stories I've heard here, but I was pretty horrified when my dad told me this story. There are some really big houses in the woods in my hometown. One of the owners went out drinking with his buddies and realized he forgot the key to the gate when he got home. He decided to just climb the gate. While climbing in his drunken state, he slips and his leg gets pierced by one of the spikes on the metal gate. He was hanging there, too afraid to call out for his wife. Since he was sure she would just open the automatic gate from inside the house, and since it was one of those gates that slides to the side, it would just rip his leg off if uh, she did that. Oh my God. He was hanging there the entire night until his wife woke up, saw him, and called the fire department. My dad, who is one of the firefighters that showed up, said they had to saw off the spike to get him free. Oh, my God. And he's just hanging on the gate all night. Yeah. I wonder how long it took him to sober up. That's a gruesome story. Yeah. I mean, thank you for sharing that, Michael. That's horrifying. No, that's like something you see in a Saul movie or something. The gate right? going sideways. Oh, what was the... The Virgin Suicides. Did you ever see that film? No. Um, it's got like Kirsten Dunst. It's about these five sisters. And one of the sisters like l jumps or leaps out of a window and ends up like impaling herself on a fence like this. For whatever reason, that the idea of jump falling or jumping um, and being impaled upon something, anything, is just just horrifies me. Yeah, this is a this is a wild story. <laughs> <laughs> My leg's like aching as we talk about it. Yeah, and he. he <laughs> oh, so he's too afraid to call out for help. Well, he's afraid if his wife opens right. the gate, he's going to totally lose his leg. Yeah. That's a wild story. And I must say, from uh, working with uh, fences and gate uh, automatic gate operators, I know exactly the type this is. They're chain driven. And it very well is probably not going to stop as soon it's as not you, show any kind of mercy. you get to the edge there where the post is at. And no, it's just going to probably keep going. I don't think I could just hang there all night. I don't know. I, I don't. I guess that's when we fi all find out we're not Olympic, at Olympic athletes and there's th certain physical things we just can't do. Like in movies when people jump up and like pull themselves up to the next level or some shit. If I had to do that gun to my head, and they're going to kill everybody I know, my family, you're all dead because I just can't do this. You can't pull your body weight up? Well, I, I no, I probably can't. No, can you? Well, I could some years ago Okay. when I was in better shape. We're all dead then. Okay. Are you ready for our next story? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Thanks, this Michael. actually comes from a patron. I've been a Patreon member for a while now, big fan of the show. So on with the story. My father died April 14th, 2020, six days before my 27th birthday, six months before his 61st birthday. About a week after he died, I had this very realistic dream that I was laying in bed and I heard the doorbell ring. I got up and went to the door, opened it. He was standing there in the doorway, which was weird because he always knocked. I was completely freaked out. I said, quote, I saw your body. You're dead. He kind of nodded and said, yeah. Yeah, I am. Well, I hate to run, bud, but I gotta go. I'll see you in a year or two. 
Okay. Fast forward to a year later. I was getting ready for work at 2 a.m. I felt fine. I put his urn necklace on like normal, but this time I felt different. I was overcome with these feelings of anger and resentment. I brushed it off at first. I got to work and was sorting the bread out, and out of nowhere, I kept getting more and more angry. I started feeling resentment toward myself. I was throwing bread across the warehouse. This was not me. I decided to take the urn necklace off and lay it on the center console of my work truck. As soon as I stepped down out of the truck, I was overcome with this emotional feeling. Then I felt normal. I text my husband about it, who is a medium. He's worked with many teams in Colorado, Tennessee, and Nebraska. He told me, quote, yeah, that's weird enough that I think something may be going on there. Keep the urn away from your person and let's not wear it until I can do something about it. I brought it home that night and put it up in the closet. We started seeing shadow people all around the house, and I randomly uh, would feel someone grab my neck, shoulder. I hear these whispers right in my ear saying, I'll kill you for that, and you shouldn't be here. Oh, my God. We think that was left over from previous tenants, but it always bugged me, never my husband. And it was um, always either when he wasn't home or when I was in another room. He told me what to do in that instance, and it's been working. I still have things happen now and then, but since he did this cleansing ritual, I haven't heard the voices since. And this is signed by James. Damn. Whoa. James, what's up? That's a very You think it was some kind of spooky story. Malevolent residual energy entering in through um maybe possibly because of the strong connection with the urn necklace and his father that um yeah, that there was some kind of I don't know. I mean, I, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like he feels like that was his dad's energy. No, right? It sounds like something else. Now we've discussed with James uh, in our Discord chat before some of the uh, paranormal activity, right? In his house, oh, it was the a warehouse at work. He's seen shadow figures. Okay, so this is the James that had the coins. Yeah, that could have a, a connection to his grandfather. Yes. Oh, my God. I know. He's like a ghosty lover like Ooh. us. I don't know. Well, James, I'm glad that that worked because it's very scary when you feel like you're being terrorized by like a poltergeist. Well, yeah. And I'm all for um, energy. I, I do believe in energy. And, and energy causes everything in our life. So it doesn't surprise me at all that you could have uh, these emotions wash over you. Exactly. And I'm um, sorry to hear about your dad. Yes. Hope you're doing better. Yeah, and uh, we just so got to tell... It's a hard loss. You know, I think wearing an urn necklace is very sweet. It is. Like, I, I mean, I've known people who've had an urn in their home, and I've known several people who do get, like, a piece of jewelry, a necklace, or a ring made, and, and I think that's pretty cool, because you're always with your loved one. Or you could sniff your dad like Keith Richards. Oh, gosh, Dylan, that's inappropriate. Well, no, what I'm saying... <laughs> He did it. Allegedly. <laughs> I bet he did it. That's that that's a key to life, man. That guy's gonna have eternal life because he just don't die. Gosh, some vampires look better than others. End of the world will come <laughs> and there'll be Cher and Keith Richards. The Paul Rudd or, or was it Paul Rudd vampire? He looks a lot better than Keith Richard vampire. That's true. Gosh, why is he how's he still hot? He's very handsome. I seen him on the sexiest man alive bullshit. And he, what is he, like mid-50s? Probably. My God. I know you were like getting a little hot under the collar. No, I wasn't. It's a lie. I said to everyone in that rack looked weird, except Paul, you were like, except Paul Rudd. I was like, yeah, but is he really the sexiest man alive? I mean, in the world? Because, I mean, come on. He's not that cute. He's not? No. I mean, he still, he looks good for his age. There are millions of people out there who would wholeheartedly disagree with you. <laughs> he looks good for his age. He does? Good for Paul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're just you're just being a jealous hater. Oh, now I gotta do something very hetero. Hey, how about them Braves, man? Didn't they win the World Series or you know something? Dylan's sexuality is fluid. Let's get into our next story. It comes from Maddie. When my aunt was about sixteen, she was working at a grocery store and had a boss in his mid twenties. One day he called the house and was begging her to sneak out and hang out with him. She was considering it because it was her boss and she didn't want to say no. My mom, who is two years younger than her, always gets these incredibly spot-on gut feelings. She had one that night and begged my aunt not to go out with this guy. Thankfully, she listened to my mom and told him no, which made him really angry. 
he ended up going out that night and meeting another girl. He took her out to some lake and raped her, strangled her, then threw her body in the water. Somehow he was caught and sent to prison. I feel so sorry for that girl, but so thankful for my mom and her gut feelings. Oh my God. Now, is that a story or what? How horrible is that? Yeah. How would you react after the fact that you was just like, yeah, I don't feel good about this. And, and we've we've said it before. Survivor's you, guilt. You've got to listen to your gut gut instincts because they're there. Well, one, you would f- probably feel some guilt like that. You know, this could have been me and not this person. Probably also very afraid. But you're also going to be relieved that, that you, you basically had possibly had a brush with death and yeah. in such a violent way. Yeah. And you're going to be relieved that you didn't go with this guy. But you're also going to feel bad because he he killed someone else. Dang, Maddie, all I can say is, like, keep listening to your mom's gut feelings. Yeah. She's on to something. Damn, I'm going to have to get her. It's true, though. You know, we've talked about it, Dylan, and and you just said you got to listen to your gut. Those feelings. Are there for a reason. Are uh, from uh, evolved over tens of thousands of years. And it's outside of societal constructs. It's outside of modern civilization and what's acceptable and not acceptable. Nowadays, that's only been going on for hundreds of years. And, and these gut feelings have been evolving in your body for tens of thousands of years. So you always trust your gut. And if your dog or cat doesn't like somebody, trust them too. Because if they so? no, if they, if you have a dog or cat who's typically friendly with everyone and they just have this person, they're like, oh, uh, they just won't fuck with them. Oh, yeah, I'll, I will use that as a barometer as well. Interesting. Because if my dog or cat doesn't like you, who's typically friendly to everyone, that means you're probably a piece of shit. Oh. Yeah, they got little shit bird sensors. They do. Yeah, it's up there around their little nostrils. I wonder if our little dog has some shit bird sensors. He hasn't Time grown. Time will tell. He hasn't grown them yet. <laughs> okay. They come with maturation. Wow. So that was quite a story. Oh my God, I'm scared. You ready for the next one? Yeah. This is, this is a wild one, too, Dylan. Thank you, Maddie. I once heard a farm was abandoned, and it was all over school that was haunted. My friends and I decided to drive up and take a look one night. It sat on a few dozen acres. There was no fence, no signs prohibiting access, and we, um, let's see, and all we had to do was take a dirt road for a mile to get up a hill that overlooked the whole property. Turns out it was abandoned, but still owned and had a caretaker. I grew up in the Midwest. Some of those farmhouses, especially the abandoned ones sitting in a field in the middle of nowhere, are quite spooky. We've seen those before. Yeah, they yeah they look spooky from miles we were away. In Indiana, yeah, and we were like, ooh, it's like the clutters, like tr- uh, in cold blood farmhouse or something. Well, yeah, I mean, well, you have all, think. you have all this land around them, fields, and you can see all around the farmhouse for you know corn locked for a or mile. Wheat locked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then it's just an old creepy house sitting out there by itself. One of the fields had those had those big rolls of hay all over it. I was uneasy about going on the property because we were trespassing. Two of my guy friends decided to walk down through a wheat field on the other side. There was a large tractor parked down there. It was dark, so I'm not sure what they thought they'd explore. They had a flashlight with them, and they were gone for what seemed like a long time, but we could kind of hear their voices from a distance and see the light bouncing around in the field. Suddenly, we hear screams. The guys are running toward us, and we can make out yelling. Uh, To make a long story short, one of the guys tried to climb up on the tractor and saw something under it. They shined the light, realizing it was a body, and freaked the fuck out. Okay. (laughs) Understandably so. Oh, my God. Turns out it was the caretaker who had somehow fallen and gotten run over by this tractor. Oh, no. We had to call the police and everything. I'm really glad I didn't go down there with them. This happened probably 30 years ago, but I'm still haunted by what happened that night. I guess in some ways it is good they found the man, and it's signed Rebecca. Wow, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, it's good they found him for you know his family's sake. I can't imagine. There's no telling how long he would have laid out there. Now Nobody that is knows. Quite a story. So you're just kind of messing around, being young, being goofy, trespassing a little bit. Nothing, nothing malicious, right? Just looking around, being creeped out a little bit. And then you find a body for real. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hope that never happens to me. Damn. That's really scary. And I can see how, would you say, 30 years later? Oh, yeah. Still being, like, traumatized by this event? Well, you'd never forget that. I mean, come on. Yeah, you'd never forget that as long, as long as you live. Wow. We always get really good listener stories. So we love our Mountain Murders listeners. And uh, thank you for sharing some of these very personal stories in yeah, some Yeah, it's true. I mean... It makes us feel honored. 
Yeah. So we got another one here, Dylan. Are you ready for this one? Yes. It's like a little lighter. The last two were kind of heavy. It's a little lighter story. When I was in junior high, there was an urban legend of sorts that had been passed down for multiple generations. My parents even heard the story when they were kids about a maintenance worker who died in a freak accident in the school basement years ago, like in the 1930s or something. Kids and teachers said the main building was haunted by the janitor. There was one main building, which was really old, um, and over the years, additions were added on. In the main building was the school office, downstairs, and a library. Upstairs, there were some classrooms, but I never had any in that building. To access the basement, you had to go to the back of the library where there was a, go a, a door going down a set of stairs. It was a heavy metal door and usually had a small chain keeping it locked. Over the years, people, including teachers, saw a man dressed in overalls, a white collared shirt, and a hat appear and disappear in the building. Some stories said you could hear ghostly whistling, lights flickering on and off, in the library books, um, books went flying off the shelves. Um, let's see. After, sc after school detention was held in the library. The one time I ever got into trouble at school, I argued with a substitute teacher, who was a jerk, by the way. The principal gave me three days of after school detention, which was from 3.30 to 4.30. We weren't supposed to talk to each other during this time. We could grab a book from the shelves to read quietly or finish up homework. I was sitting at the table with another student on the first day studying for a test. She got up to pick a book, and after about 10 minutes, she came back from the stacks and whispered something about the chain on that basement door rattling. Oh, gosh. The teacher in charge heard her, and she was moved to another table. I didn't think much about it. It was my last day of detention. I had done my homework and still had about 30 minutes left. To kill boredom, I got up and started browsing the books. On the back row, by the basement door, is where magazines were kept. Picking up a copy of a recent National Geographic, I started flipping through it, deciding if I was interested in any of the articles. For no reason at all, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I can feel goosebumps spread across my bare legs. I was wearing shorts. I got a cold chill. Something told me I was being watched, so I looked up from the magazines, turning from side to side to see if anyone was near me. Then I looked back down at the magazine. Something then directed my eyes to a movement behind the magazine rack. Staring back at me was a man's face. He was wearing a light tan felt fedora style hat. He put his finger up to his lip and said, shh. Oh my God. I let out a loud scream. The next thing I know, the man is gone. Poof vanished into thin air. Of course, everyone in the library, about seven of us, thought I was Looney Tunes. I told my parents about it that evening. They recalled similar stories about when they were kids. I'm pretty sure I saw the ghost janitor that day. I've never seen a ghost since. If my story makes it on an episode, I'll be so happy. I love the show. I feel like I'm hanging out with family when I listen to y'all carry on. And it's signed M. Oh, thank you, so M. like short for Emily. Or... Yeah, your story done made it. Holy shit. <laughs> you're you're going to be semi-famous with us. I don't want a ghost to go, shh. No, that's At like me? the <laughs> no. Uh, no, that's one of the creepiest things the ghost could have done. It's like, yeah, just just keep it quiet, you know. Or the whistling, yeah, like the phantom whistling in an old building. <laughs> that would really wig me out. Like even if I didn't see anything, but I heard like phantom whistling. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna work for me. No, it's pretty no. frightening. I, I would think phantom whistling, disembodied whistling, whistling. A whistling is um, right up there with the the little kids, the kids' laughter, or them asking you things like if you want to play or something. You know what? I love when people call a groundhog a whistle pig. Yeah, that's what they Isn't are. That a great little name for them, a whistle pig. They're so cute. Uh, well, whistle pig just sounds cute, right? But they will eat your ass up. Will they? I think so. They're rodents. Oh, I don't know. Aren't they? They're ground squirrels. Yeah, I'm I mean, I've sure. never really known anyone to be attacked by a whistle pig. You run and grab one up. They're pretty big. My granddaddy used to eat them. Well, they'd probably shoot them first. No, he would. He would shoot them and then he'd eat them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was a really creepy ghost story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got a good mix as usual. And this is why Dylan don't go to the library, y'all. It's, it's what keeps me from furthering my education is the, the library ghost. We've got one more. Are you ready for our final story? Yes. Okay. 
my girlfriend and I were hiking along some abandoned railroad tracks, and we get to a small bridge going over a little creek. I'm about to go explore under the bridge when she points something out. I look over, and in the woods across from us, I see a guy. I'm like, whatever, and keep heading down to the creek area. And then the guy stands up, and he's naked. We immediately backtrack pretty quickly to get away from there. And once we were like a minute down the trail, I look back, and this naked dude is just standing in the middle of the trail watching us walk away. Oh, no. This is signed Rachel. Damn. So, I have questions. Yeah, okay. Why is he out there naked? Is he just like an exhibitionist? Is he like trying to find a rainbow celebration? And he's just like in the wrong place? Like he got there a couple years too late? I mean, what's <laughs> up? <laughs> he's whacked out on Molly looking for the celebration. Yeah, I don't know. No clothes. Oh my God, I know what it is. What? Hey, just a poor little farm boy. He seems to have lost all his garments. Oh no. And he'll do anything anything to be warmed up by the fire oh my gosh maybe it's the guy from okay cupid oh god and he wasn't having any luck sniffing his date so, so now he he's thought just maybe a... he would just randomly walk in the woods until somebody loved him oh i'll do anything mom anything i just need some sustenance again something to get me through the cold night this is something i don't want to ever have happened to me i don't want to just see some random naked person in the woods no that's weird it's really weird well anytime people are naked like you know where they're not supposed to be naked, it's already weird off the rip. Like if I was a cop and I showed up and there's some guy wigging out or a girl naked, I would be like, oh, my God, not another one of these. Because I don't want to get involved in that. You know, in some ways I envy people who are very secure and comfortable with their body enough that they feel like being naked just is, cool. you know, they're okay with that. I feel like every inch of my body needs to be covered at all times. Well, it's uh, it's what it's. Uh, yeah, I feel the same about myself. <laughs> it's what's best for society for me to be covered. It's safer for everyone. Yeah, but uh, yeah, just uh, and to not say anything, to not say anything, just look at you and they're naked, and then they're just watching you walk away. Would it be even weirder though if the guy was just like, "Hey, y'all, how you doing?" and like puts his hands on his hips and is just like standing there, like talking about the weather? I think that'd be less scary because then now you've opened up conversation. I can be like, hey, so uh, why are you naked? Right? Yeah, I guess so. So I get some follow-up questions. <laughs> I have questions, sir. This reminds me, Dylan. Um, okay, so I found this YouTube channel, and I actually had sent some videos to you, and I told you you have to watch. It's called the Soft White Underbelly. Oh, uh, yes. And this photographer is making, like, these mini documentaries, uh, posting them on YouTube where he interviews people from um, – Skid Row, mostly, um, in L.A., but I think he travels because he's interviewed people from, like, Miami and Houston as Charlotte. well. Charlotte. New York, I believe. But he interviews a lot of, like, addicts, homeless people, uh, sex workers of all kinds. He had a couple that are nudists, and they live, they live full-time at a nudist campground in Florida. Really? And they were, like, an older couple, both very attractive. I mean, I have to say, you know, even the photographer kind of made a joke about the, the guy was like, oh, yeah, people always hit on my wife. And the guy was like, well, I can see why. I mean, she was stunning, you know, blonde. She was really pretty. You could tell she really took care of herself uh, physically. Uh, the husband was an attractive older man. Of course, they had that really blonde hair and the, the dark suntans. Yeah. Like I imagine probably back in the 70s and 80s, they were probably really like the hot beach couple. Okay. Kind of thing. Like Ken and Barbie is what they reminded me of a little bit. But they're full-time nudists. And so they were talking about like getting into that lifestyle. And then I guess part of that was also they were swingers. Oh. So they were just kind of explaining that lifestyle to this guy. And, you know, they live there full time, so they're full time nudists. And the only time they ever leave the campground is if they go to like Walmart or something, and that's when they'll put clothes on. Because he's like, you know, people in public don't tend to like this kind of thing. Well, I mean, you know, it'd be a bit odd. But, uh, you know, that's probably not for me, but I have to admire their sense of security and being okay with their bodies. I mean, I just can't imagine like gardening naked and Well, see, that's the thing. Riding a bike naked, playing naked tennis. That I don't do, know. that would be my um It's probably very freeing. I would say once you get comfortable with it and if you're around everyone else, you know, wants to be part of your journey, <laughs> um that I guess it would be freeing, but I don't know that I would be comfortable naked doing things. Does that make sense? Right. I don't even think it's just about the fact I'm fat. 
you know, right now. You have a beautiful body. Even if I was skinny down and super fit, I don't know that I would feel comfortable raking naked or mowing naked. Well, just so you know, I love or your roles. Digging fence holes naked. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about that, Dylan. I was thinking about you uh, pouring concrete, yeah. and, you know, using a chainsaw. Me getting down low to the do something. The only thing you're wearing is like your safety goggles and maybe yeah. some steel-toed boots. Yes. Yeah. I just, it seems like be a lot of stuff moving around, a lot of jiggling, a lot of hanging. And uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem safe to me to do a uh, lot manual const- uh, manual labor naked. Even just like hanging around the house <laughs> naked is right. kind of odd to me. No, I sleep naked because I must. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I must. I get hot, and you know I do. Oh, God, you're like a sauna. I have never met a human being who puts off so much body heat. How can all this body heat not translate into calories burned? It just uh, it defies scientific logic. I feel like you could provide a heat to, like, a small community. I feel like I could be rented out to people who are, like, lost in the wilderness. Like, when they make first contact before they can actually get in there and save them, they, like, drop me out of an air, (laughs) out of parachute me in. They're just going to drop you out? Of yeah. A plane. Yeah, and I'm gonna have like a a barrel of bourbon around my neck, like a little Saint Bernard. <laughs> yes. Like a little Swiss rescue dog or something. Yeah, like they're like big a, though. Like a a beautiful story. Because I'm big. What? Okay, so I've always thought about this. Um, well, one reason why I probably never wanted parachute like skydive is just being afraid of heights. But two, what if your parachute got stuck in some really tall trees and then you were just hanging there? Oh yeah. Like really, and you were so high up though that if you like released yourself, you would probably like break something. You know that you're gonna shatter your pelvis and your legs. Yeah. But at the same time, you're hanging there slowly dying. That's scary. Wow, you want to go parachuting? No, I don't. Well, that's why they do it in the open areas where you don't get hung up in trees and power lines. Just saying. Oh yeah. Well, what yeah. if it was some situation where you like had to jump out of a plane? Well, what if there were uh, snakes on the motherfucking plane, Dylan. <laughs> I know what your choice would be then. Yeah. You'd be skydiving without a parachute. I'm going to crash that fucking plane. <laughs> and we're all going to die. Okay, so that was a great episode of Listener Stories. Uh, we appreciate Always appreciate fascinating things sent in from our listeners. Yes, we appreciate everyone's of submissions. We do. And uh, that was a great time. We have a lot of fun with those. Hope we were very annoying this episode. Yes, and, uh, and, and just one last shout out to our one-star reviewer who is... Uh, Using coded racist language, uh, fuck you. <laughs> exactly. So there's that. Freedom fighters. America. We're gonna fuck change yeah. the name of the podcast to uh, True Crime Freedom Fighters. <laughs> okay, so here that's it. That is our offbeat episode, and we hope everyone has a a very turkey day, a right? Splendid holiday. Yes, yeah, the day before Thanksgiving. If you celebrate, we hope you're having all the turkeys and hams. Yeah, and dressings, just, stuffings. Oh yeah, I like to be stuffed with turkey. Yeah, well, yeah. Sweet potato pie. Maybe. I want a pecan pie. Maybe. Yum. I want some corn syrup all over my body. Corns, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, no, I want. Them. I want everybody to be listening to this while they're making their meal right now in your headphones, in your earbuds, while you're drowning out the family that you love so much, and just know that I like to be coated and baked. All right. I want to be a casserole. Well, butter is button. Call him a biscuit. (laughs) Yeah, everybody have a happy turkey day. We'll be back on Sunday with a brand new true crime case. Hope you enjoy the holidays and get to spend some quality time with the people you love.